Okay, we'll start this meeting, call it to order. And the first item on the agenda would be, or I guess that's the first, but the second agenda, second item would be to approve the agenda. So moved. Gender? Second. Dowling? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then next on is the approval of the February 21st minutes. Were there any corrections or additions or subtractions anybody wanted to see? Okay, can I get a motion to approve? Move to approve the minutes from February 21st, 2023 meeting. Dowling? Second. Bill. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Public comments. We have anybody on the screen? We have nobody in the room. No one on, uh, no, I'm the only participant. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome to be here. Okay. So first presentation, Adam, you're going to talk to us about the Shangri-La Master Plan. Yes, I will switch the screen here. Okay. All right, so um, I know this committee has, um, we've spoke uh, um, briefly about Shangri-La in previous meetings. Um, if you recall, I think it was in January, January, December, we did the um, drone footage of Shangri-La. Um, so um, uh, Land and Water was nice enough. Um, Andy Oper from Land and Water, he's the JS coordinator. He also has a drone. He was nice enough to fly the drone uh, for us from Rift Road here. Um, he flew over the property. Um, both north, well, this north part of NARS, but flew over basically the property from both angles so you can get a good visual representation of the property. Uh, for those who, just as a reminder, um, down here, this is uh, Lake Butamore. Um, and then, like I mentioned, Rift Road here, um, and then Shangri La Point Road, I believe. Uh, it's not late. Oh, here we go. There's Shangri La Point Road. Um, so, Tom and I have been working with uh, Rettler uh, Corporation on creating a master plan because in the so what I, I typically like to do um, is um, for the CIP is to, to get the committee up to speed early. Um, this is in the CIP, the Capital Improvement Plan for, it was in it this year um, as a next year project, uh, 2024. Um, so next year would be, we would be requesting the official request or making the official request for the funding for this project. Um, so I like to get in front of this committee early um, so that way, um, you know, I don't know if the capital improvement plan process, I know there was a goal of eventually getting into the November timeline. I don't know if that'll happen this year or not, but I just wanted it to be early because as the other than walk on dam, which has already been talked about and um, the engineering was approved for this year, next year would be construction for that. This would be our other project uh, that we have in line for next year. So what, uh, what we did here um, is we worked with Rettler. Um, as you'll notice here is that it's a phase one and a phase two plan. Um, so in Sorry, Justin. Okay. Um, so phase one and phase two plan. So um, phase one is going to be this red box here, and I'll zoom in on it here, um, but I just want to give you an overview. The, the goal, um, or kind of to rewind a little bit, Shangri-La, this property is, as you may recall, um, 95, 96 is when we acquired the property. Um, it has been, it's a nature preserve, um, or designated nature preserve. We have not done anything to it other than, you know, there's vandalism or that type of thing, um, you know, or anything hazardous. Really, it's just managing the property. We haven't really done much with the property. Otherwise, um, there's no parking. Um, the road is uh, pretty narrow. Um, the shoulders have a pretty good drop off into the ditch line. Um, really, we've, we've had this property for about 25 years now. There was a plan at one point. Now, this is back in 2000. It was on the board agenda or the board, um, and it was... It wasn't approved, but there was a plan at one point to build a um, small nature preserve. Now that was I, sh I shouldn't that was not on the agenda to per, to build um, the the building. There was going to be a, like a nature building. Um, it was actually um, on the agenda was to share a naturalist with Hecrat. Hecrat was just starting up at that point as well. They had a half time naturalist, and the idea was we'd have half we'd take half, they take half, and we have they have full time staff between the two properties. Obviously, both properties have changed since then. Hecrat is now a much bigger operation, um, but it's pretty much as similar in terms of size, um, in terms of acreage, and in terms of uh, the makeup of it. Um, and so we we obviously, as I mentioned, haven't done anything with our property. So just to kind of give you a little bit of background of what has been proposed in the past. And then since that 2000, nothing has been done. Um, so what we're looking to do, um, I'm going to zoom in on, or basically zoom in a little bit further here is 
I might be a little too far. Um, is so as as you can recall, it's a, it's mostly wetland. There's a little bit of um, forested wetlands up in this area, and a little bit of forested area. Really, we did a wetland delineation of just the red box for now. Um, so you can kind of see um, this red line is the delineation between these wetlands here and then the non the uplands, the, the non wetland area up here. Um, otherwise, down here, if you remember for the drone footage, this is wetlands. Um, there's four different tier wetlands here. Um, and then Lake Butamore. And then actually this um, this wall was built by Land and Water. I don't know if anyone remember. It, it was several years or many years ago. Um, so this this is actually was built by Land and Water. Um, so the idea, the goal would be to add boardwalks and a area or a way to utilize it. Um, this property, you can see all the boardwalks here with the piers, um, with the lookouts. Um, so people can access Butamore, can access the wetland area, can enjoy the nature and the natural area here. And really, I mean, as we've talked about in other meetings with other properties, there's not a lot of property or public property, or public access to Lake Butamore or any of the lakes anymore. So being able to provide access, be able to get people out um, to the lake and be able to get people into this natural area would be a great um, benefit to the public. So this, um, so that all being said, that's kind of the, the big picture, really walking trails, um, mostly boardwalks. If you actually, if you pick, picture Heck Rock, because they have a lot of wetlands, um, there's a lot of boardwalks out there. Um, and because of that, um, that's why we're looking at two phases, because um, as you may know, um, boardwalks, and actually here, here's just a picture, you know, of that type of boardwalk and the type of lookouts we're looking at. Um, boardwalks are not not cheap. Um, and so the goal would be to first get access out to the site. So that would be phase one. Um, access, some basic walking trails, and a viewing platform. Um, then we would work, um, try to work to see if we can figure out donations or put together a group for phase two. Um, so phase one, I'm just going to zoom in on a little bit here because this would be next year. So, or the proposal for next year. So phase one, as it looks, there um, would be this asphalt walking trail on the inside, uh, the inside loop, the parking area, um, a pad for, they have a restroom on here, um, but we're having them remove that. We're not gonna put a full restroom in here. It would just be kind of like what we do with a lot of our nature preserves. So we would put a portable toilet there, um, but we, we, you know, we put a little gravel pad there. So that way we have something to set it on. Um, lighting at the intersection. So, you know, a light at the intersection, probably one by the parking lot just for site safety. And then you can see here is the viewing platform right here at number four. Now, a viewing platform could look, I apologize, it gets rid of my slider. Oh, here we go. It's there, hidden. Um, you know, could look something like this, you know, obviously the, the exact design. But the idea is, at least in the short term, as you get out of the wooded area here, right on the edge of the wooded area, that you have a viewing platform that you can look out over the wetlands. Um, even if the boardwalks aren't built for five, 10 years um, throughout the rest of the property, you basically have a way to access the forested area. You have a way to look out over the wetlands. And this could be part of phase one. You'll see it's an optional when we get to the, the cost breakdown. Um, but as of right now, just that first loop, the parking, the lighting, basically getting access out to the site. That was the original purpose. Um, so we could utilize the site. Then um, as you can see with phase two and all the notes here uh, that was in your packet too, but basically what each number um, item is, but basically then the rest of it, the rest of the project is mostly boardwalks. Now this dotted line is just a potential, you could create another connection here that's not included in the cost, but <coughs> what that dotted line is. It, black, the black dotted line? Yeah, the black dotted line is <laughs> to create another connect, connection. Um, so then if we scroll down to phase, the, the pricing, so phase one. So phase one, as I mentioned, was that inner loop, the um, lookout station, the, the, um, the gravel parking lot, and the inner loop being the, or they're calling it the upper loop, the upper loop on um, the asphalt trail. Um, so that way it's ADA compliance and everything as well. Um, base project cost of 287580 I had put originally a placeholder uh, for 100,000 just for putting a parking lot with highway originally. Um, I, but as Tom and I were working through the project and thought, well, okay, we're gonna have a parking lot out there, out there. we should, um, from a usability standpoint, obviously we were just gonna cut in our own trails, but to, for ADA and those types of purposes, putting in an asphalt trail, we thought was the better way to go and putting a lookout station there too. So that way there really is a purpose. You can go out there, you can bird watch, you can enjoy the nature um, 
and see the whole property from there. So even after phase two is done, obviously that would be a nice addition to have uh, for the people that don't want to do the full loop. Um, if you look at when I mentioned alternatives, they had restroom building in there. You know, as I mentioned, we wouldn't be doing that restroom building. And then this is that when I was talking about that, and I'm going to show you the map again, but when I was talking about that lower loop, this is an additional 231,000 if we would like to do, let me scroll back up, this loop, basically getting a little bit further out into the wetlands. So that 281,000 is for that extra amount. There's a little bit of asphalt here you can see, and then the rest of it is boardwalk. So that is an alternative to phase one. Uh, um, that's this part right here that I was just talking about. So you can see boardwalk is, is the biggest cost of all of this is 226,000. Now phase two, um, so that's and that all, be, That's one boardwalk. That's that's that first loop. That's- um, Or is right. that the viewing station? Um, no, the viewing station, I'll show you. Um, so that, that's this right here, just this loop. <laughs> no, I mean the cost. Yeah, the cost is for that loop, just the small, just the alternative though. Um, the rest of it, so um, the here's the trail. So for the, the, the trail, the viewing station, overlook allowance, basically this is for that upper trail and the overlook. Um, this is for the parking lot. This is any um, electrical use site lighting, and then this is just general excavation, uh, putting in a culvert um, at the front entrance, um, those types of things. This down here would be that extra loop um, outside. Oh, it's still phase one. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, this is an alternative if, if basically, now that would bring the project up, up to over 500,000 at that point. Um, we only had it 100,000 going into the CIP. Um, so, you know, staff thought, you know, responsibly, like the, that's 287,000 in the the first phase was more responsible request. However, obviously the, the engineer did provide these as alternatives. Then just to show you phase two, phase two is all the other boardwalks. Um, and you know, we have a mile or so of boardwalks out there. Um, so it is, it as you can tell, that's why it's phase two. And that's why we try to look for grants, donations, partnerships with community foundations and those types of things. Um, so um, you can see basically the the earthwork that would be required and that's for some some basically the trails that don't have to be boardwalk um that's 125,000 some screenings um some topsoil and then this here is the rest of it the asphalt um the little bit of asphalt um, trails we can do that are outside of wetlands and then boardwalk um so you can see i mean phase two is 1.6 million it's you know that's more of a uh, fun and, and honestly, as Tom and I have been talking about it too, phase two could be broken up into phase two, three, four, you know, that type of thing as well. Um, but I think that this would be a potential when you look at, I'm just going back up to the plan, when you look at the impact of the project, there are donors out there, you know, obviously you have to find the right partnership um, and the right donor, but there are donors out there that a project such as this, like the, the boardwalks at Heckrod, um, that, you know, there are potential partnerships out there. That, and obviously there's grants too, through the Wisconsin DNR, uh, through the NRDA um, that we've received before. So those are other avenues we'd look at as well. So like staff's goal at this point would be get phase one done, get people out to the site, um, get the site open to the public and more accessible to the public, and then start looking at phase two, two and or three, you know, however we break it out um, for, and start talking to potential partners that, could maybe be interested. So I'm going to switch off the screen here and that's and turn, turn it back to everyone else. Just out of curiosity, are we still planning on doing the expo center next year, phase two? So the expo phase two is engineering for next year. Next year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have engineering on there for next year. Um that's a larger project. So that's one of those projects that we would do permitting and engineering um, in one year. And then we would do construction the following year. So whereas this uh, with this project, um, it's small enough that we could do both in the same year. Okay. Yes. Um, do you guys have plan for an entrance? Um, as in, like, do you have any signage or? I saw signage in here somewhere. Um, or just like, or a, I guess a picture or two of it. And, um, then, and then maybe I know you had those photos of the. Not the boardwalks, but like the lookout points. Mm -hmm. And are those just examples or are those what we're, we're trying to do? Those are examples of other sites that have been recently built. Um, more than likely that this engineer has worked on. 
just to kind of give a picture and idea what they could look like. But those don't necessarily, that's not necessarily the final exactly what it'll look like. But in terms of when they're trying to create their allowances, like the 30,000 for the lookout, they're saying that this is what 30,000 could look like. Okay. Um, in terms of the signage, yes, we do have an allowance in there for signage. Of, we have $1,000 in there. Um, Tom has done, we have two, which we need to work on our design standards for our signage, but we do have two different signs. We have a sign, uh, we have a sign that we put like um, a Black Wolf, you'll see a new newer sign out there at the Black Wolf Boat Landing. And then we also have um, like what we have at Waka Dam, Waka Creek, um, which is more of a kind of a traditional park wood sign yeah. um, that we've routed. Um, we've been leaning more towards those for the nature preserves. Um, so, but we do have a thousand dollar allowance in there for a sign at the, the front entrance. Cause yeah, we'd want people to know too. What is this place now that sure. you put a parking lot in there as well? Yep. Cool. Thanks. I had a couple questions. Um, what are the, the uh, viewing stations and boardwalks made of? Are they, they look, I mean, they look like wood, but they're, it's, they're it, probably it, not. Right? No, it's more the, it's more the composite material. Um, yeah, they don't, they don't say it on the, they just say boardwalk, but it's more that composite decking. Um, so basically it's so we'll engineered hold up well in a, in a marshy. Yeah, place. correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My second question is all the little swirls. Is that just, is that some sort of geographical, uh, uh, notation or are they just designed? What are the white swirls in, in this? Oh, um, that's mostly surveying, surveying. So like, so there are some kind of geographical. Markets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is cat. Yeah, yeah, mostly they're catching the cattails and, and the little bit of land features oh. in there, but it's it's mostly, I mean, you wouldn't be able to walk through much of it. I mean, in the spring, you could probably take a, a small boat almost through it, um, obviously more like a rowboat, kayak mm -hmm. type thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the survey of the site. Um, and that's really, that's not, they didn't survey the site from scratch. That's taking data from DNR and those type okay. and other GIS data, LIDAR. And I was also wondering, um, Either for you or for, for Tom, um, what kind of disruption to wildlife or foliage would there be in, in installing these um, uh, viewing stations and boardwalks? Well, they would be suspended. That's on a wetland, you got to be so there would be a probably a, a column put into the earth, you know, like a six by six or a telephone pole style, and then the whole thing would be above the you know, probably 18 inches to three okay. feet above the grass, so it wouldn't interfere with the. Wildlife underneath whatsoever. Wildlife. If anything, it'll give places for birds to perch. And oh, that yeah. and that's actually why you do the boardwalk system. The DNR wouldn't allow us to put it, for instance, put a trail. Um, it has to be an elevated boardwalk right. so the vegetation can grow as it normally would. And the other thing is is we bring shading for fish too, you know, and like so, you know, it has advantages. Okay. Um, but it will not interfere whatsoever, other than maybe a, if a moose got in there and gets stuck. So he needs a view too. Okay. Can I ask you where, when you're going for these grants? Now, because the way I would look at this is this is also um, the wetland is for the fish um, spawning. Mm -hmm. Is there grants just for that plus grants for bird? Uh, what, what these grants? There's got to well, be more than one. Exactly. Grant. It's all about pairing together. But I also think a project like this, you're looking also at private donors um, to try to see if you can find someone who's interested from a project standpoint that way. Um, but the Wisconsin DNR Stewardship Grant is an example. We're applying for that with Waka Dam for next year. Um, that is one that covers, um, can cover fish, can cover um, just, they also just have basically pot, uh, they have four um, sections within the state that they give to parks for just general infrastructures too. But there's different sections within that grant. Um, some of them is, deals with water. Um, there is federal fish um, and, and wildlife um, grants. And then the NRDA, for instance, is also, it's run, it's though that's private dollars, but it's run through federal uh, fish and wildlife because they need to funnel the center through. So that's like, for instance, uh, for Grunman Boat Landing, um, where we got, now, but that has to have been, um, some of that has to be on areas that were impacted due to PCBs. So whether or not Butamore is in their um, qualifications, I'll have to look into some of that. But yeah, there's definitely, it, it just depends how they all fit together because some have different deadlines for different years. Some have, you can, can have matching funds. Like NRDA, for instance, um, you can use matching funds from another grant. Whereas, um, uh, the stewardship funds, you also, you have to have, 
there's matching funds like the NRDA can count because it's private funds, but you can't have like another DNR grant as matching funds. So it's just putting the pieces of the puzzle together. That's where I also think private donors are, you know, if there is a private donor out there, obviously, you know, we've tried to show them um, this plan, obviously show them the initial concept after it's built, uh, take them out to the site um, and work with like a community foundation to see if there's a match, like the Oshkosh Community Foundation to see if there's a match out there of someone that's interested in donating to a site like this. You know where I'm going for the more money, the more free money, the more can get done. Right. You right. know, and then asking the board, you know. Right. That's why I know, and that's why we wouldn't ask for the full <laughs> amount at this point. You know, staff's plan would be to put together some sort of fundraising plan, whether it's private donation, a combination of private donations and public uh or um grants and, and those types of things. And then uh, would you guys put any, uh, I guess, signage along the boardwalk of how you can maybe a background on the birds that will be there or the plants that are around there, or is it just going to be pretty much open and kind of let people flow and do their thing? I mean, those types of things we'd absolutely look to add. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that would only enhance the site. So like on the viewing platforms, like on uh, the, their label number nine, as an example, you know, putting them on those. Um, a lot of the boardwalks wouldn't necessarily have railings, at least how they're currently designed, because you don't necessarily need a railing on the, the elevated boardwalks. Um, so we have to figure out, you know, you could, but you could add like a post occasionally, to obviously to add some sort of informational signage or a kiosk on it. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I have one other question. When they open and close the dams, of course, that elevates the water and everything. Mm -hmm. Is do they have some type of uh, do the Army Corps of Engineers that the water levels got to stay at a certain point? You know what I'm saying? Also, well, you build and it's dry grass or it's underwater. Right. Actually, actually, the engineer we worked with back in Grave, he's actually in charge of that now. Um, they they do have meetings that um, with that are open to the public that talk about where they're going to be putting the water for the year, and I get those invites. Um, and when you go to build something like this, you work with the engineers and you work then with Army Corps of Engineers to ensure that we build our boardwalks at a level that's going to be sustainable for the future, that they're high enough that we're not good, they're not going to be underwater for multiple years. So, yeah, we would definitely have to work with the Corps of Engineers through that. Well, I'm also worried the other way that they open the dams. They did it last year. You could walk across Miller's Bay. There was no water in there. Sure. And if I mean well, that I happened, know, we still had boardwalk to walk on, so we'd still, you know, that wouldn't really affect us as much if it was lower than it needed to be. If it's higher than where you than we built it for, that would be the issue. Um, sorry, my kids and I spend a lot of time at Heckrod, a lot of time at Heckrod. Um, and one of our favorite things is to stay and eat lunch while we're there. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of sad that the bathrooms aren't staying. Um, washing our hands is. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Idle after exploring nature. Um, is there a way we could add that back into like a phase three or? I mean, they re really can be added. I mean, they're the capability to have them is there. It's okay. just, it, it really just comes down to budget. I mean, it's kind of like the running water at Fredman. Sure. It, you guys wanted running water at Fredman, <laughs> which is great. I mean, it's going to be great for cleaning, it's going to be great in general. Um, those are obviously types of things that, yeah, we can either add in another phase or if the committee, well, the board, you know, wants to add something like that into the project, that's obviously something we will have uh, an area designated, a pad area that can be converted into a bathroom if need be. Okay. Um, and then just to give you an idea of that cost, obviously, that was the under alternative one or the first alternative, the bathroom, you know, for instance, 179000 is what they're estimating it would be mm -hmm. to put a bathroom in there. Okay. So. Just to give you an idea of what it would cost. Is that cost? They're not hooking to a sewage line. That would be a holding tank or wells or what? That there is a sewage on them, right? Oh, there so is. So we would be required. They wouldn't allow us to put a yeah. holding tank in there. So it's, it includes sanitary service and then water allowances, which um, they in here and I didn't ask them too much about this because I didn't. But well, uh, they'd have a well is what they're proposing. Obviously, a pump, pressure tank, piping. So. They did basically well and then probably exactly hooking up to a sewer on riff is what they were proposing. So so obviously if it is right on riff, I mean we're right next to the road, that wouldn't be a lot to look up. That's why I mean it's only 18 actually thousand for sanitary, so that's not too bad. And obviously we would get a actual, you know, one thing too with this restroom building. Um we had an actual bid cost for that restroom. We can always walk on talk to Yankee. 
um, because they're buying that the restroom for Grumman. Uh, now we had allowance in there for them, but it was a lump sum bid. So however they were able to afford it. basically we could always ask them how much that restroom was because really it would be a similar yeah similar concept yeah um as to what what they ended up buying it for so while we're discussing restrooms um the unit price is 450 with the extension being 130 135,000 does that mean there's 300 units of porta potties what is that I don't understand what that means oh 450 dollars I see what restroom building um, per square feet, square foot. it's per square foot. So they're they're estimating a building per square foot, kind of like when you build like the Coffin Building, you have a uh, per square foot price depending on okay. the types of finishes in the building. That's just for estimating purposes. Okay, I agree. It would be nice to have bathrooms in there. There's one thing to consider when we do the bathroom. You know, I I, I don't disagree that I mean I really all of our sites if we could have if we could have bathrooms, I 100% agree. Just one thing to consider is eventually, you know, we have staff that have to go out there, obviously, to service and clean them. Then, um, so it's just one thing to consider. Obviously, this site's pretty close um, to us, but it's just obviously something else we have to schedule into our. Uh, whereas right now, with the uh, portable toilets, we have raised sanitation come out and take care of them. So just something to consider. Sanitation um, is, is a private company, or is it is there a county? Uh, raised sanitation is a private company that the okay. county did competitive bids for and. They have the low, or they provide the porta pots for the county at least as of this year. Okay, I guess I'm just kind of thinking too, like if we're approaching donors similarly to what Heckrat does, they have bathrooms. Maybe yeah. we should have bathrooms. Yeah, no, I, I mean it's <laughs> it's absolute. I mean, if you would ask me compared to like Walkout Creek, Walkout Dam, where we have to go 30 minutes, 20, you know, 25 minutes to drive out there. Obviously, these would be at least closer. Um, you know, we're talking five to ten minutes to drive out there to clean the bathrooms. So sure. something we'd have to add to our list, but it's not as difficult to get here to take care of them. But okay, yeah. that'd be great. Okay, any other questions on this? All right, we need to take action on this. No, this is just for. Um, I wanted to make sure it was. You know, like any of these things, like if it's something the committee wanted to see added to it, um, um, or the, that type of thing. So that way, when it comes time to, you know, the capital improvement plan, and when it's in front of the board, all five of you are experts on this project and can speak to the project. And if, if something needs to be added beforehand, we're not scrambling. I mean, we're in March right now, so we have plenty of time to, yeah. you know, even if it's November that we do CIP this year. Okay, moving on to number six, discussion action on the. Uh, Wisconsin DNR annual snowmobile grant. This is a yearly um, process we go through. Um, we have to basically pass a resolution um, to uh, that the board would accept funds from the Wisconsin DNR. Um, they do that for most of their grants just to, before they give them to make sure that the county is or whoever is prepared to spend the money and, and do whatever program it is. In this case, it's the snowmobile. Um, it just is um, a reminder, um, 2020, so 20, this is for 2023 into 2024. So basically whenever it starts snowing next year, November through um, roughly March. Um, and we anticipate 144 miles. We are, um, there is one um, club that is requesting 10 miles. I think it is Justin, about, about another 10 miles. We find that out um, typically in the summer. Um, that actually happened two years ago. And then we brought it back to the committee and to the board to approve the additional, additional funding. Miles. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, th and that would come with additional funding. Um, as a reminder too, I mean, so basically the county is the one that just, um, we're kind of the pass-through, but we're, we're the ones checking to make sure that the clubs um, are submitting their, um, submitting all their uh, mileage for grooming, um, submitting their time for um, do, putting up signs every year, taking down the signs, uh, basically for putting, taking up the trail. And any maintenance they do on the trail. So Justin uh, monitors that through the system, checks off that basically the DNR gives us some criteria that they have to match in terms of if it qualifies for reimbursement. And we check that off. And then at the end of the year, like last year was a good example um, that we had about two thirds of it that we gave out because obviously last year we didn't have any weeks where there was um, the snowmobile trails were open. This, this last year, there were about two weeks I want to say, and not yeah, all maybe. of them though. Yeah, um, some trails didn't even open at all. Some trails some zones didn't open at all. Yeah. yeah, so we divide the county into zones, or the, the snowmobile club alliance does, um, and basically some are able to open, some aren't. It just really depends because you got to remember they're going through private property and farmers' lands too, so they have to be careful to make sure that you know 
that they're not tearing up their land and that kind of thing too. So, so yeah, so we're looking to basically pass a resolution through so we can, um, we have to apply for the grant. I think actually the grant is due two days before the board meets, but they're always okay with the resolution coming a day or two after, you know, a week after. So and this is typical, this is similar to uh, past grants we've had for a snowmobile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, actually, the amount should be the same as we asked for last year. So okay. same Even if the trail doesn't open, you still have to keep the brush up. So, you know, yeah. just because that snowmobile trail never opened, you can't let the brush come into the trail because next year when it does open, if you have a bunch of overgrown brush and the snowmobile are trying to get through there, well, naturally. Well, James, James is a master mower. <laughs> and, and they do set up the trail each year with anticipation that it's going to be open. So even in, let's say two years ago when it didn't open, mm -hmm. there was money spent because they set up the trails and they took down the trails. Yeah. And I think they even tried. I remember seeing a little bit of grooming on there because they tried. Um, so, you know, they, they tried their best because obviously they want, they want snowmobiling to happen. So I'd make a motion that we uh, apply for the snowmobile grant. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? I heard if I say one. All right. The, <laughs> the Nesker property. I thought I'd been hearing about the Nesker property for 10 years. I've been quite a few years. Um, okay, what's the update on the Nesker? So I don't have a large update. Um, in fact, I probably could have kept it in the Parks Director update because we talked about it last week, I wanted to, or last month. Um, so I did get uh, pricing back from highway last week, so obviously not in time for this meeting. Um, I do have to work with a, um, I got to get um, um, an estimate from a consultant because we, we assume there's going to be asbestos or other hazardous materials in there. Um, and then for disconnecting the water and the electric and some of those utilities. Uh, but the highway did come back um, about off the top of my head, it's about 20000 to remove the home and remove all the materials, get it to a landfill. So there's going to be a little bit more cost in there, obviously, for the any um, hazardous material and, and disconnections. So once we have all those numbers put together, um, the goal is to have it on in April for approval. So, um, and then that would be May board. Um, and then once it's approved by the board, then highway can get it in their plan. And then uh, whatever consultant we work with for the um, um, the remediation or the asbestos. Um, we know for sure there's asbestos tiles in there, but what else is, if there is anything else is the other question. So so basically we'll be back, um, I'll be requesting for it to be back on the committee in April. So that way we can keep moving through the process and hopefully by the end of summer or end of fall or this year, whenever highway can turn the schedule, we can take down the house. So I know that, yes, it's been a long process. Is that barn to that? Is yeah, yes, the barn is, yes, the barn. The bar in the house and the small garage, we're leaving the metal garage. Well, the metal garage. We've been using that. So, so actually, we have equipment stored in there. I think the water tank was in there last. So, yeah, we, we stored the water tanks in there. So, and is there less um, cost in removing things like asbestos tile as opposed to other forms of asbestos because it's all solid? Yeah, and, it's, it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, they don't need, and they don't need to encapsulate anything like you do in an occupied building. So they'll come in there, wet it down, take it off. I lived through that about 25 years ago in a church when the whole thing was tented instead of doing yep. yeah, They don't need to do that, mess. not with tile. Uh -huh. so should be pretty quick. You know, it's not going to be thousands and thousands. Right. Of and then where do you dispose of that stuff? They take it to the land, a special landfill. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, there's one I think at Ripon, for instance. Okay. Yeah. It's taken there and buried the same day. That's why it's so expensive. Yeah. I think there's one on the other side of the way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any what what was this mean? Request to purchase. Who was trying to purchase the property? Oh, again? sorry, I shouldn't change the wording on that. But yeah, I remember last last month we, yeah. we talked about the request. But that's old. That's yeah, old. I should have just changed it to update on removal of the home. Okay. So I just kept it the same. Okay, as sorry. It was last okay, month. so any any questions about net, sir? Yeah. Yeah. What if some kid comes by and burns the thing down? Please. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, I listened to that Buckstab factory for what a year, and then they paid three hundred thousand or something like that to remove it. So I did. I mean, on that note, I did call actually, like the uh, town of Oshkosh Fire Department, um, okay, yeah. and they don't really do any. They're going to train in it. They said they would love to train it. So of course, we'll we'll be partners with them and let them train in it before we take it down. So we're going to bash the walls down and stuff like that. Um, well, we have to remove the as any asbestos before they do training, right? We, we'll coordinate with them absolutely, okay. and they'll they'll know what when they can. Yeah, so the obviously that would all have to be removed. But um, 
I did ask them about burning it down, and they said they don't really do that anymore, unfortunately. So, too bad. So they said mostly it's liability. You're all, you're all for a big, big fire. That's yeah, the wow. biggest, yeah. The biggest reason they said is liability. So, okay. Uh, and I guess sort of connected to that, is there any any further update on on either annexing um, that property into um, Oshkosh? And have you discussed anything with um, uh, Jeff Schneider at the YMCA? So staff haven't had a need to push it forward by any means. Um, we called Jeff, or I called Jeff, and I have okay. her back room. Because oh. I wanted to see if, because you had mentioned that you had talked to him. And yeah. I, he said I, the water's brown out there. The yeah, I haven't heard that. Yeah. So I left him a message on this phone. So. All right. Anything else about Netzer? Moving on to the Parks Director's report. Oh, it's on potential inter international. Oh, yes, the fire, the fireworks. Piece. I could always combine them too. But yeah, no, so PG, I, I don't have a huge update on it other than um, they are coming this Friday, um, Thursday even, I think they'll be down here. Um, to like when I say they um, basically they're big planning group so they're coming down we don't have a contract with them yet but we hope to sign it on Friday Saturday um, so they're going to be down here Thursday do I need to be here for that what's that do I need to be here for that um no not okay. that would just be it, it's just the contract doesn't require board approval so it would just be signed by the county executive and okay. PGI um, so and we've been working with corp council on it as well so basically um, they're going to come down uh, Thursday afternoon, some of them are coming down, but their big day is Friday and Saturday. Um, staff are going to be available all day Friday. I know um, they're meeting with Oshkosh Fire, Oshkosh Police, um, basically everyone just to kind of walk through the ground, see what setup would be, walk through the barns, basically do their big setup. So our staff will be available to meet with them. Um, and like I said, hopefully then we'll have a contract signed on Friday. We've been working through it this week, um, or well, we've been working with, through it for a couple of weeks now. So we're working through the final touches this week. Um, so yeah, that's the update on that, and hopefully by next meeting I can have a different update on it. So. Okay. Just the one comment: uh, as soon as we can start selling tickets, it would be wise to do right. that. I mean, we're already within four months of the, and we're talking maybe twenty thousand people coming to that, so that's twenty thousand tickets. So yeah. you know, we can only we, fit, want, we won't be able to fit twenty thousand out there, but well, there's two days. Or about ten thousand per day. We can fit about as of right now. You can fit about five thousand in the field. Okay. So about right. 10,000 total between the two days. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, uh, Justin has camping at the back end already started. Um, and so, because we had open camping too, uh, camping is another piece of the puzzle. And then, um, yeah, and then ticket sales, we've been talking with Oshkosh Visitor Bureau as well, because they'd be a partner in that. Um, obviously, advertising that and potentially selling tickets, or we might sell them. We're, we're working through those processes too. And Oshkosh Visitor Bureau has just been kind of patient on this because obviously, a couple of years ago when we tried to do this, you know, they put a lot of effort into it. And then a contract wasn't signed. So we've had conversations with them. I actually met with Amy last week um, and Jody as well. Um, and we're, they're just, as soon as the contract signed, they're ready to go with us, but they just are kind of being patient to make sure it actually goes through. So I know the, the fair partners with festival, they sell their tickets and festival has locations you know, pretty much all yeah, over. Yeah, and actually we sell our boat uh, passes at festival. So we already so have a relationship might with be them. A, That's yeah. always a possibility. They do a, like a, Pre-sale, so maybe like ten dollars in advance, fifteen dollars at the mm -hmm. door. If we did something like that, sure. you know, because that way you, the quicker you can sell the tickets. I mean, right. if we don't sell tickets, we don't make nothing on right. it. Right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. so we, we put a lot of effort into it, and there'll be no revenue. Sure. So we want to basically, if we can see ten thousand, we want to yeah. sell ten thousand. And people come from out of the state too, so we've even been talking about do we do all online sales because to make sure that you don't show up and then you don't have a spot. So, um, so yeah, we're looking for all those types of things. We just haven't quite finalized it yet, as we find, try to finalize the contract and the cost sharing and that kind of thing. So, yeah, sounds good. I know, like the concert people last year, they were into the concert. They never sold any tickets. Yeah, if you don't sell tickets, it's not going to work. And that was a different setup because that's the promoter booked the facility like most of our other um, um, promoters, and it was their response. I mean, well, obviously, we we had multiple meetings with them, um, yeah. expecting that it was going to happen. And you know, at the end of the day, we whereas this one, we're a little bit more responsible for selling tickets. That one was completely the promoter's oh, responsibility. Well, when they weren't selling tickets in July, you could pretty much guarantee it wasn't. Yep. Happening. Yep. So that's why, well, they canceled too late and the deposit was kept. So, so, so yeah, as soon as we can start getting the tickets printed and, and marketed, I think it'll yep. be best for both Absolutely. parties involved. We've already received questions. So, yeah, as soon as we can. Any more questions about uh, PGI? Moving on to Parks Director update. 
All right, I have a few updates here. Um, so we signed the contract with MSA for the comprehensive outdoor rec plan. Um, I just got to get that cycle through. Um, they, I just got it back, I think, on Friday. Um, so I, this this committee will be involved in that at some point. Just wanted to keep you up to date on that. There are some contract questions, so it's taking a little bit longer because um, MSA was negotiating some things. Um, and working, I'm currently working on two requests for proposals. Uh, one to remove uh, 22 trees at Black Wolf. Um, so that's going to unfortunately remove quite a few of the or quite a bit of the canopy over there. Uh, but most of them are dead, dying ash trees. And then the Waukaw Dam, working on a request for a proposal for engineering services for that project that was approved for this year. Um, on that note, Waukaw Dam, the grant is due on May 1st. I mentioned the stewardship grant that we, we utilize. Um, so we're going to be applying for a stewardship grant for that project. We won't know until September, but the deadline is um, in May. Uh, we're working on recruiting some summer staff. We have we lost our, one of our rangers from last year, um, but we did offer uh, to a ranger. Um, and they accepted. Um, we have two seasonals starting next week, which is great because it's these shoulder seasons, especially when um, the grass starts growing and we usually don't have any or we don't typically have as many seasonals. So we at least have two starting. And then we have one that we just hired and um, another one that I have a phone call up to. So that's all we have for applications as of right now. I think last year we were at about six staff. So that would put us at about four um, so we're hoping to still get more because we do have one returning coming back as well. Um, so I think we're at four or five right now. Um, so if you know of anyone else still looking for summer jobs, keep sending them on our sending them our way. Um, for the um, April meetings, st um, staff will have a request uh, for the Wacaw. So a few items on it. Um, we need a resolution for the Wacaw Dam for that stewardship grant application that I'm working on for May 1st, um, similar to the snowmobile grant, basically, that we're applying for a grant. Um, we have a five-year contract um, with the Winning Gaming uh, Dog Club. Um, the Nets are home. will be on there. And then the Wyawash Trail Swap will be on there. Um, some of you may, I mean, actually it might only be Steve that's been on the committee long enough to maybe even 100% know what that is. So we will go over that again next. But basically what that is, is um, in short, um, it's swapping from Eklund Power Sports down to UWO, that section of the Wyawash Trail. It's about a three-mile section. Um, basically, and swap is probably a poor word at this time, um, but basically um, turning over jurisdiction to the city of Oshkosh. Right now, we maintain that trail. Um, when we when the state built the um, or rebuilt the bridge um, and we took on the tribal heritage crossing, the, the basically the trail along the bridge, we asked the city if they would then take this portion of the Wyawash Trail. Um, so that's why it's called a swap, but that was about 12 years ago. Um, so um, basically we're working through that. With that, there'll be a funding request because the city is requesting that we repair some of the asphalt um, there. I did get a, a price from highway on that. And then there's an MOU and easement and some documents in there. So that'll be coming back to this committee um, and then the board in April or May. Um, highway is still working on, so they obviously, as you can see, they've been working on some so some stuff for us, the Netzer home and the, the Wyawash trail swap. Um, still waiting to hear back more from the community park parking lot, so that's still in the plan. And then some trail maintenance at, um, on the Wyawash Trail um, over by West Wind Road there. I'll be at a conference next uh, at the end of April, um, um, a park and rec summit. Um, is, I was invited to a park and rec summit, um, April 25th to 27th. Um, actually, this city, it was kind of interesting because I got a phone call, um, and basically it's 50 uh, park directors throughout the nation that they invited, even some in Canada. Uh, for this um, more intimate kind of um, summit, they call it. I wasn't able to go to the conference in uh, February, or the Park and Rec conference in February due to some health stuff. So um, when they called on this, I actually checked with Ray Maurer because he is the city park director and he was invited three years ago and he said it was really good. So um, I will not be here. Um, and that I know, I know, unfortunately, that's on Tuesday um, of our next parks committee meeting. Um, so other staff will be here to run through some of these items, um, unless for some reason um, the meeting has changed to a different date. Um, shelter rental fees, just as a reminder, we passed that. That I tried to get that on the March agenda, but it didn't. It didn't get put on the agenda, so I was told it will be on the April agenda. Just so you're wondering, if you're wondering where that where that's at, because that was already approved by this committee and by PNF. Um, for the park side of things, 20 buoys have been refurbished and painted. Um, staff are working on trimming trees in the community park. You'll see lots of limbs down. We're kind of waiting to bring equipment out there. Obviously, we don't want to run up the, the ground, but we're at least dropping the limbs, and then we're going to get the chip, chipper out there here this spring when things start drying up. Um, staff are getting equipped for the summer. Um, Stacy, one of our um, 
Parks Caretakers got her CDL. She was hired last year. And so we um, sent her through that. There was actually a grant with the state. So that was really nice. Um, and then nine hour shifts. We're working um, with the, we've been working since um, last November um, with our staff, some of the other, like the airport, the highway, um, and solid waste. I feel like I'm missing one, but land and water. Land and water. That's what it was. Um, they have, um, uh, we were instructed by the county exec to look at creative ways potentially um, to continue to offer more services, but providing um, potential benefits to the staff. So one thing we're looking at um, and we're waiting, um, we're going to make a decision this week or send over to HR and county executive for approvals, nine hour shifts with our staff, um, meaning uh, they would work then from six to three. So be less takedown setup time. Um, some of the office staff are looking at nine hour shifts as well, which actually would leave the office open an extra hour every day. Um, so that would definitely be a benefit to the public to have the office open for nine hours instead of eight hours. Um, so we are looking into that. I just wanted to make um, the committee aware, um, just because that might affect our office hours. Um, we might have more time there. Um, and then if people are working nine hours, then and are they working fewer days? Yeah, sorry. So nine hours, that would be like Monday through Thursday, nine hours, and then a half day on Friday. Um, but what we do with like our, our caretakers is we'd actually rotate someone to work um, every fifth week because we have five of them, basically their nine hour shift on Friday. So we have coverage all week too. So okay. we're essentially getting an extra five hours of coverage throughout the week too in the parks uh, from a maintenance standpoint. So there's definitely a benefit to the public. There's a benefit to our staff. They get a little extra half day every week. Um, so a little extra longer weekend. So I know highway does 10 hour shifts. I was going to um, stay to school is 10 hour shifts and then, and then you have a three-day weekend and everybody wants a three-day weekend right and even even the half hour for us so for us it was too difficult to do 10 hours because <laughs> with what we have all going on at the parks we just have a lot going on um, especially on fridays and the weekends so we need to make sure we have those coverages so um and then expo um mentioned pgi already uh baja's coming this may deer fest is coming back um to the expo they were there how many years ago now rick five Six, seven, mm. wild, ten. Ten. <laughs> ten. So, ten about ten years ago, years. they're down in Washington County right now, but they're coming back to the expo um, in July. So that just happened. Um, there's also you might have seen some um, advertisements out there. So I just like to make the committee aware. Um, there's a promoter who we've been working with. We do not have a contract with them at this time. Um, we have not received a site, um, a more formal site layout, and some answers to some of our questions. Um, but basically a short course off-road race at the Expo in the Sunnyview um, Stadium area. They would come in, build an off-road track, and then take it out all in one weekend. Um, we do not have a signed contract, but they've been advertising that they have an event here um, this fall. So just in case, I've, I've received calls. Um, so I've told my county executive office as well because um, we, don't, we don't have a signed contract. And we actually haven't heard from them in four or five days. So just so you're aware, uh, we're working through it. But it may or may not happen at this point. That's why I just want to make the committee aware. Because it obviously, racing at the Sunnyview Expo, if you know the past, it received a lot of traction on Facebook when you announced that they're coming here. But there's nothing we can do to prevent them from announcing something. But just so you're aware. Um, and then of course, working with a lot of other potential events. Um, our big event um, out at the community park uh, for Bago this month is um, the Glow in the Dark Easter egg hunt. So um, we're almost full. Um, the, the, adult, the adults are full. Um, we have three, three or is it four um, age sections? Four. It is four. Three of them might be sold out already. Yeah. Yeah. I, our, our teenager high school group, we might flex that probably a little bit about yeah. some of the younger. But yeah, even the adult um, sections. So Justin, we're working hard on that. If you want to see what the eggs look like, I'm glowing in the dark. We have the eggs in our office, but um, and then obviously the shelters, bull rentals, the park expo contracts. Justin's working through a lot of that. That's that's my update. Our update. I don't want to see the eggs. I like to see the the animal that laid it. Of glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple of questions. Um, when you have to remove 22 trees from um, Black Wolf. Is there, any, is there any value to the wood? I mean, is that stuff for sale or do we have to pay to actually have it cart it off or is there any value at all? I think Tom can speak to that better, but with some um, people cutting ash trees. We, there's really no value to it. I mean, if we would, there's no like pulp value, nobody wants it. It's such a small amount of wood. Um, we have to usually pay to have it removed and it's not a whole lot. When we do it in small amounts, we will dice it up for people to handle it. And then we put a free sign on it and come back in a month. If it's there, we get rid of it. If it's not, I kind of like that idea. That if it's yeah. good, if it's good enough for firewood, for instance, right. campfires and or something. We we prefer people to take it. Yeah. You know, I I don't give it to anybody, but I'm not telling somebody can't take it. So. 
I mean, it'll usually be gone. But that that'll be okay. that would be a lot of lumber, and I, that's probably a little bit too much. Okay. I mean, if we had two trees, I'd leave it, but not twenty trees. I mean, it'd fill this room. Yeah. So. It's gonna be a lot. So because a lot of them are bigger trees too, uh, and they, a lot of mature trees. They really don't have much use for it. There's no market in it. Mm -hmm. Not those smaller amounts. I thought I heard that one time I asked you. I thought it was out at walk off. You cut them four foot lengths and leave them sit there and people yep. pull them off. I... Mm -hmm. And any anything in logs, there's a guy out there that is always yeah. looking for it. He's approached the he came to our committee meetings. So if it's a worth his while, I'd call him up and it's gone yeah. the next day. So okay. but we normally yeah. don't pay to get rid of wood, but this one would be because it's a private contractor. Um, even the highway, this is a little bit too much for them. Yeah, a lot of it's over people's homes. Over yeah, you got a 50 foot tree leaning over somebody's house. Oh, that's why I wouldn't get a contractor. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else that we could ask? No. Any, any questions for, for Adam? So I only have one if we're up to the staff updates. We can move on to staff okay. updates. Are we on it? Sure, let's go okay. on because there's no questions for Adam. So we'll go on to the staff updates. I only have the one. Ask away. He basically gave her updates. So <laughs> he question, yeah. I just have one question. I asked it last month and I'm not trying to hound. Where are we with uh, the DOT? And, uh, I reached out to know. the last I heard they were, it was going through, a, um, which process was it with them? Uh, I'll reach out today. Right. I'll send an email to our contact with, because um, <laughs> it is starting to, a year would be in October. So we're yeah we should probably be getting an update at least the next step. So I'll, I'll I'll reach out to them and I can send an email to the committee to see where we're at or let you guys know. It took us about two years to get the Jerry Fish. It, take, it takes it takes a while. Yeah. It forward. depends. It depends on the property. I know there's one in out of game I worked with. That one took three years. So I'm not trying to push. No, it. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Don't want to drop. Yeah, so, nope, absolutely. I agree, hundred percent. Because I want that free parking lot. <laughs> Okay, Steve, do you have anything? Josh? No. Nope. Rachel? Mm -hmm. I only have one thing. Someone has approached me about the possibility of, and I've already talked to Adam, so he can talk about this, um, uh, co collaborating with City with, for a pickleball court. So we discussed it. You wanted to, wanted to say what we came up with? Yeah, I mean, so... Um, with um, we've been talking about it for a couple of years now. So Justin's position changed to programming marketing coordinator. We've obviously shifted focuses a little bit. You can see the Bago program and some of that. That we're trying to do some programming, getting out to the community a little bit. Obviously, it's just me and Justin. So, um, you know, we can only do so much. So we usually collaborate with others um, like um, Bago, PDS Fusion, and Oshkosh Rec um, are our partners. We've had, so there was a question, um, actually I received an email too from a, a county board member basically about pickleball, um, having tournaments or having leagues. Um, actually, Cable um, Helbert um, is the director for the Oshkosh Rec Department. He reached out to us last fall, I think it was over the winter, about pickleball um, leagues. Um, and of course we said, yeah, you absolutely could have them out at the community park. Um, just let us know if it ends up happening and those types of things. We've not heard, so I'm, I'm guessing. I know Oshkosh has dedicated pickleball courts. The biggest problem, was, so when we're talking about programming, we have to look at a few things. First of all, we want to make sure we're not duplicating something that the cities and villages are doing because then we're just competing against other taxpayers and they're just doing the same exact thing. So it has to be something that's different or that's collaborating um, with them um, in any way we can help. So, you know, I, one thing I think that could work in the future um, is having more pickleball courts out at the community park. Um, so right now we actually have tennis courts that have pickleball lines on them and they have that plastic grid, which a lot of users, especially tennis, they don't like that plastic grid. They like an asphalt tennis court, uh, you know, an actual tennis court. Um, now the basketball courts, we'll drive by, we'll see people on the basketball courts daily um, and playing basketball out there. So we do see tennis. I shouldn't say we don't see it, but I think that if pickleball is not going away, um, it's a sport that's going to last. It's been going on for a good 10 years now, and it's not going away. Even the USTA, um, and the tennis association that was always fighting it, they definitely, they even got on board a little bit with pickleball. Um, so, I mean, I think in, in the future, I think building dedicated pickleball courts, since we have so much space, we have parking out the community park, and we're right off the highway. If we were to be a tournament type area, I think pickleball courts in 
the community park, but like dedicated ones. Uh, if you go up to Appleton, they built, um, I want to say it's eight, six or eight courts that are lit. I mean, I'm not saying we have to light our courts, but they're just pickleball and they're just used all the time. Um, and they're, it's a complex with lighted courts and eight, six or eight of them. So can't remember which park that is up there in Appleton. They're new within the last two or three years. I don't know. Three, I think it's at Tulula. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tulula has lighted courts. Menasha built lighted courts a couple of years ago. And then Nina's putting them in. I mean, place. you can see everyone's putting them in because they really are getting used. There's demand for them. I've had people calling me. Um, I've had two two people so far that have reached out to me that want pickleball, not board members. Um, they want more. Um, one's trying to get a meeting with me in the county exec to talk about it. Um, so it's it's definitely, and he's there from Asha. So the need is there, and we have space, that's for sure. It's just more or less, obviously, it's it's a cost, of course. Yeah, is, but, it, it's also, is it also too late in the season? I mean, got, we're already in March. Is it too late to be thinking about one for the summer? Um, like a league, yeah. No, not, no, just to, just to build one or two. To build, dedicated. yes. For this year, you'd be talking about building in fall if you were to start now. It's a simple engineering process um, because obviously we have flat land. It used to be a tennis court um, for those of you that maybe were out there because I know that happened within the last one. Well, that was almost 12, 10 years ago now, so you might not have been on the committee quite yet. But um, if you, so if you look at our tennis courts just to the north, they're, they're actually, if you look on an old map, there were actually more tennis courts there. Um, when they redid the tennis courts and did the, the plastic grid, they um, got rid of those ones to the north and just kept the ones to the south and put the plastic on because they redid the surface. Um, so it's it's flat. There's the parking lot right there. Uh, we even have a water fountain already there. But there's bathrooms at Shelter 4 across just right across the street. So there are bathrooms right at Shelter 4. So really, I mean, yeah, they're not like right there, but you know, you, you could stick a porta pot there if you wanted something, if they were that popular. You know, there's a there's a running restroom, a running water restroom right across the street, and then there's this. So, I mean, I think down the road, I think that would be um, definitely benefit to the park. But obviously, you got to fit it in with all our other projects we're talking about. Is there about any too. thought of, re since people don't like that plastic covering, is there any thought about repaving our tennis courts? You could pull that that surface and there's an asphalt surface underneath it and you'd have to color code it or oh. you'd have to just paint it yeah. but it's in decent shape as far as we know well it was put in in 13 and it's yeah, 10 it's, years but yeah asphalt should be fine okay yeah every about seven to ten years you would seal coat a tennis court so i know my condo do. they've had trouble with their tennis courts things buckling and bubbling and uh, yeah. So tennis courts are built. So that's the only question is 10 years ago, how they built it um, with knowing that they were to put the plastic on top, because usually um, the compaction rating for a tennis court is a lot more than like a road. Mm -hmm. um, usually you're about 98% compaction for the asphalt, whereas a road's about 93. So that's the biggest difference. And that's, and then they purposely do the saw cuts to make sure. So I, I haven't seen underneath the surface of them. Well, you know. This tennis court is original to the park. So when they resurfaced it, it was 45 years old. So it had time to settle. And then they just pulverized it and laid the top on the top. I see no um, deformation of the surface at all because it's old. You know, it's, it's so settled. What would it take to take that? I mean, if they don't like the plastic covering, why we still have it there? It, it just well, there are a handful of people don't like it. Then there's a handful of people who really like it. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's okay. you know the Both. squeaky wheel always gets the boost. Yeah. You know? okay. But I think like the basketball court, they love it. Yeah. It's really I, easy on the knees, and then after that, okay. I would agree. I don't like playing tennis on it, but on I like playing basketball on it. And basketball is yeah, totally fine. Basketball, it's kind of like a wood surf. It, it, it's it's kind of nice, but when you play tennis, it wouldn't be my spot for tennis. Yeah. We could take the two tennis courts right now and take that surface off and repaint it and we'd have asphalt and then keep the one third for basketball. What would that cost? Um, Whatever I the paint and cleaning. And yeah, I seal coated, color coded a basketball court two years ago. Just one basketball court. It was about 7,000. So just probably about 10,000 a court. So probably 20,000. Do we need board approval to do that? Um, twenty thousand. Yeah. Do we need, think, do we need to think about about doing that? That's a, I mean, for, for a removing the plastic, all that. That's more operational than anything. But then, obviously, if we're going to color coat, seal coat it, which you want to protect the, mm -hmm. the coating at that point, and obviously get the paint, the lines painted on it, and that kind of thing, you're probably maybe an aftermarket for that surface. But because yeah. it does seem like if if we just did a couple, we get a feeling about you know, does suddenly there's a lot of usage with pickleball um, teams coming out to play. Well, just sort of the history of what's happened out there is we used to get pickleball 
you know, three days a week consistently. And then the city of Oshkosh did those dedicated courts at Menominee Park. That was a vacuum. It just sucked everybody down there because it's court you know, to figure out the lines. And the nets are lower. The nets are the proper height. Yeah. And they started all their leagues down there. So we had them. They moved down there. But they don't have enough. Right. They're looking for additional. And then do we have lights? We don't have lights at that one either, which is at Menominee, you got the lights. And it's just a button. So you can hit the button. It can go off. Yeah. And then you got, you know, you can be there until 10. Oh, yeah. Or later. Yeah, that's nice. And we're obviously in a spot where we don't have a lot of neighbors. So, I mean, especially where that's at, you know, a lot of times a tennis court, the ting, 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 yeah. or a basketball, you know. So what's nice is you are really, truly in a spot where if you did have lights, stop, you know, you're... I don't think Steve, as a neighbor, I don't think Steve would hear that or complain about hearing it because it's that far away. Yeah. So Menominee well, Park just redid all their tennis courts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really nice down there. They got the lighted courts. It's like the city of Oshkosh has got a budget of 164 million. It's almost as much as the county. The county's budget's 190. So the city spends almost as much to run the city of Oshkosh as we run the county. Yeah, Our, their park Department budget is probably four times what ours is. So we can't keep up with them, you know. I mean, they're just under six million. We're just yeah. yeah. A lot of that's in staff. They have a lot of staff too. And yeah, then, yeah just the because the level of maintenance is different. You know, they have Can we get an update for next month. I know you won't be here, but if you and Tom could discuss or you are you gonna run the meeting next because we I we haven't talked talk to Tom yet, by okay. the way. <laughs> I was yeah. talking to you beforehand about do we move the meeting and then we just decided no maybe for you Tom will run it so or run it from our perspective because we did talk about what whether we would change it well the Tuesday before is the county board we're not going to do it the same day as the county board the Monday we run into into uh, Dr. Belleville's you know long day until 6 30 at night we're not that's not going to work he only asked for that you know he asked for one day so yeah. nobody's yeah. mowing yet I Nobody's here. golfing yet. I'm here on the 25th. Tom's here on the 25th. So Tom, hey, you'll run but, the but meeting. I, I, I've already sold. So, but this could just be on this. You know, sure. We don't have to have a presentation or or, or a resolution, but yep. if there could just be some, if the two of you could talk about what it would take and what we need to do, some sort of presentation by next month about whether this is even feasible or a good idea or. When I'd like to meet with those, some of those community members that we've been trying to meet with too. Um, so we yeah. can reach out to the county executive and see if we can get that set up. Okay. I, I think that'd be a really good idea. The one thing we've noticed personally, like our parks department in Menasha is that unless you have dedicated space for pickleball, people do not love the painted online. Right. It's just there's so many lines it gets cluttered because in the yeah, tennis player, same thing it gets cluttered and then yes. then you the nets are higher, you know, and it's just nets are higher for tennis, right? Tennis, 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 tennis yeah. nets are higher. So really need, is it a lot higher? It's, it's not a lot like, higher. That's why it what? works, but it's it's enough. Yeah. It's There's, enough to change enough, the game. Right, exactly. You pull down the center. Work. You pull down the center to yeah. get the center to the right height, but then you got a, a gradual V shape. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a professional pickleball player, they there's I money know. in pickleball. Oh well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy. It's it's, up, it's, yeah. it's popular. I mean, because it it's you don't have to. It's basically tennis, but you don't have to run as far, so that it's easier on the knees. It's easier, you know. So it's very popular. It's yeah. like, think of a cross between ping pong and tennis. That's a good way to put yeah. it. Yeah. And I think a lot of like uh like uh when you play tennis, I mean that's a very physical sport. When you play pickleball, there's a lot of older people, so like it'll be younger people playing tennis. A lot of older people will be playing pickleball, so it's kind of cool to everybody's mixing and everybody gets to see each other. So it's kind of a nice community yeah. event when everybody's there for all ages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me just discuss it next next month. Um, I don't know how many tennis courts we have. Would it make any we sense have to have? Oh, we only have two. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Three, but we True. basketball was so popular that yeah. we took the net down in the third. It's still marked, but. They play okay. it. They were yeah. playing basketball all the time. Yeah, basketball's a daily event. Yeah. How, how popular is tennis out here? I know that Oshkosh West put in nine new courts last year. Um, I, I mean, they're their high school, probably more for their high school team and stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they let the public come play, too. other group involved with it. Yeah. Says, um, and obviously, usually those are pretty nice courts when it's at school, totally so right. if they open them to the public a lot of times. The there, are, there are the regulars that come out here in Oshkosh North. They'll come out here and practice. You know, so but as a compared to basketball, basketball is probably four or five fold. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's always someone out there playing basketball. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think tennis is just kind of dying right now, kind of like the softball leagues. Yeah, I mean, getting... those are ebb and flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of it really is ebb and flow, it really is. On a low end right now. Okay, so any other community updates? Yeah, I guess we're, we've discussed this. Adam's going to be at a, at a fabulous conference. Apparently. And I think you're really excited about that one. Yeah. 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 And we're hoping that Tom will deign to leave the meeting. <laughs> Tom's, left. Tom's been there for four meetings. Tom's good. Do I get to control the agenda? Add a few things? <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm holding you can <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm gonna I'm gonna agree to them. You know, when it comes to the approving the agenda, I may say we're scratching. Half is just being things. heard. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any future agenda items besides discussing, uh, you know, the feasibility of, of having a dedicated pickleball or what we should do about that? Any other? I guess I'd like to see a update on our future play equipment. I mean, it's all at its life expectancy, about twenty five years, and. One of these days, the kid's going to get hurt out there because that plaque is going to crack and they're going to fall. So either we have to think about replacing it or we have to think about taking it out. We have a park with no play equipment. And we had a lot of those in the um, capital improvement plan. Um, I know like shelter one got pushed back um, um, with the comprehensive outdoor rec plan. Um, we'll be going through obviously the whole park. And we're actually doing a master. I can't remember if I told but MSA did put in their uh, proposal master plan for the community parks, like the whole, I know we've done piece kind of mail, um, but doing the whole park. So, which obviously is most of our playgrounds. We have one. At, uh, I know we talked Eureka. about doing something like uh, Oshkosh did little Oshkosh and rather than having five spread out throughout County Park, maybe it'd be nicer to have one big play set. So it, it would be more, you know, like you go to Menominee Park, that, that thing is packed every day of the week. You know, you come by ours and they're so small, we don't really get much utilization. And if we're going to redo it, why wouldn't we redo it with something that the community wants? If you we're know? going to redo it, would we would we look to having some um, um, adaptive play equipment? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could be fully ADA accessible or okay. no matter what they have to be accessible now, like that's a requirement now. Um, but you can go as far as like little Oshkosh with like ramps to every piece of the, the equipment too. Sorry, I'll just interject. Yeah. Um, we just redid one of our parks in Menasha and we met with four different design companies in the area. Everything is ADA now. Mm -hmm. It's like state law. Yeah. So, so even if they don't have a ramp, there's like a transfer station. It's like basically a um, it's a platform that just doesn't have the bars and that they can transfer onto it. But most of them are, are ramps now. Um, okay. That's actually what drives the cost so much is the ramps. But yeah. They're, they're great. I mean, and there is, I mean, I'm sure. You guys know this too, but I don't know which park you're talking about specifically for redoing. Well, but it's, all it's, it's, it's like in the city of Oshkosh on the end of Merritt. It's like our they got a little zoo in there. They yeah, get, yeah. It's our best park that we have in Oshkosh. So, like the sunny view here needs a new playground. Is that well? If you go around the community park oh, and you look at some, okay. of, yeah, go look at some of the playgrounds. Okay, they're they're at their life. So, yeah, they're there. Okay. They're now the biggest thing is we have. Nick, we'll discuss this through the comprehensive plan, but we have shelter one, two, three, and four. There with two has two's fine in the sense it doesn't have a big playground or anything. It has a swing set though that, but whatever. One, three, four, and the pavilion okay. all have play sets that are at their 10. The biggest question though is when you're talking about a bigger, and that's what we have to talk through the comprehensive plan is a bigger playground. It's a good idea, it's just where because the sure. pavilion area is also, you know. In the pavilion building itself, and some of that, you know, have the biggest parking lot, but that whole area is in need of what? What's the vision for it in the future? Okay, because um, that's also another big question mark in terms of cost. <laughs> if you if you're either rebuild the pavilion or if you just take it down, you know, those types sure. of things. Yeah, the, the playgrounds are probably twenty to thirty five years old. Yeah. Got it. And then you obviously have a soccer complex that is so busy on the weeknights and weekdays. Do you have should something be down there for people that aren't playing soccer, but they're there with their families? Sure. Um, I know my kids were having three of them. I'd bring one to soccer and the other two would do whatever in the grass. Sure. Um, but a lot of like the one in a, a town of Nina or town of Manasha has a soccer complex. I don't know if you know that area, but I can't remember the area. Uh, Nina does. And they have the playground right in the yeah. middle though. So. <clears throat> But that'll, well, yeah, through the conference about the right time, that's definitely something we're going to have to look at. I would like to see maybe some of that coming out of the ARPA money. You know, I mean, it's like 
the average taxpayer is going to pay that money back and we're not doing much for them, you know, and with inflation being as high as it is, it's pretty nice you can take your children to a, a play area. It doesn't cost anything. I mean, there's all kinds of areas you can take your kids and, and spend $15, $20 per, you know, yes. but it gets a little pricey. Not everybody's got a hundred dollars. Where here you can go to like little Oshkosh and you go there on a Saturday, it's packed, mm -hmm. but it's free entertainment. And that's what we need to provide for people because the money's tight. I mean, mm -hmm. we gave a 4% raise and inflation was 8.7. So they lost 4.7%. They had to cut their budget. They don't have the money they had last year. So if we can put something here that they can do as a family that doesn't cost nothing, I think it's a good benefit for the, the community. And Adam, are you saying that like you would move that playground like closer to the soccer fields? As in like, so then that's just an idea. Like when we look at a master plan, does the, the soccer complex need a playground? I would know, agree with that. Or something for, for families. Yeah. So I think that's something, because that's that's the only thing is the park is so big that, and like some people, and Justin probably could speak to this more, but some people run shelter one because it has an, a playground. But yes, it only really benefits the shelter rentals. Um, you know, the, the park is just, I mean, it's 300 acres. It's, it's big. So, you know, do you put one more in the center and then still have maybe one or two smaller ones for some of those shelter rental is there for the, the soccer groups or so I don't know. Obviously, it's things we'll have to look at as we go through the master yeah. plan. And we might, if possible, if we could start the discussion sooner than later, because playground lead time to get the stuff ordered is nine to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even if we had money today, right, exactly, we were not going to get anything for a year. And we're doing a whole conference plan out of the park. As soon as that contract signed, then we're going to do our intro meeting with MSA, and we're going to be jumping right in. So okay. within this, by the summer, we're already, already starting the process of with this committee and with the public looking at the park, looking at obviously all our parks, but um, we had a little bit more of a focus on the community park, at least in the, they're, they're providing a master plan just for that park. So okay. we'll be able and to really dive deep into it. Since I've been here, we've been trying to move forward with this. It just never gets any traction it sure. gets up to the capital improvement plan and then pull out up to it and pull out yeah. that's what happened i mean flash pad and you can put a bowl landing in for two million no problem but two hundred thousand for kids mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i like the ARPA idea that you had steve that sounds well it's just like they're going to be paying that money back why wouldn't we give them something you know and right when we took that 25% out for the nonprofits, that freed up $8 million. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see some of that money. So far, the parks hasn't got nothing from our book, you right. know, mm -hmm. and every department should get a part of that. So have it be the expo center, the playground equipment. I've been on here going on basically seven years and we've been after playground equipment for seven years. Oh, and we, we have no playground equipment and it's at the end of its life expectancy. What does it take for a child to, to fall and, and break a leg? And then we say, well, we'll just take it all out of the park. We won't have any for 18 months. We, you know, it's time now to start planning so that in 18 months or two years, we, we can actually move forward, you know? And Tom, why do you think that well, there was pushback or why we just took it out? I, I just think it comes down to priorities. Um, I don't think the park... I don't think we get the same. I think they see us differently. I, you know, uh, some of these outlying townships may just see us. Well, that's the city of Oshkosh. Well, we're Winnebago County it happens to be in the city of Oshkosh, and I just think that we get pushback. It's just not a priority. I think I mean, it, they're ex really, really expensive. Yeah, and I think it comes down to you know the community park right off the highway could be a county. I mean, it is a county park, but it could be more of a county draw. I mean, obviously, it already is for soccer. Um, it is for large events, obviously, like Fest and Monk Festival and a lot of other festivals, rugby. Uh, but, you know, I think about it. I live in um, Town of Oneida, up by De Pere. We have come down to Oshkosh to go on the playground and hang out at the beach. Um, we go, we travel for those. Uh, we travel to Sherwood to go to the splash pad there. You know, you there are... You know, I'm not saying we should count cater to the town of Oneida people because that's even a different county. The point I was trying to make is that I'm traveling even cross county to get to some of these types of things because it's free and it's it is an attraction. So I think there is an argument that I think if you had something like that in the county in the community park and you're out in Eureka or um, out in Rushford, you know, that you would drive in to to take your kids to something like that. And yeah, I would actually second that. Um, I'm a part of a play group. Just a bunch of moms and each week we go to a different premier park in a different city 
because it's cool. Right. So for whoever has the cool part, that's right. where we go. <laughs> like an Emily Park on your list. Like I can uh, we Washington have to twice a year. Was it Washington Park in uh uh that would be not nah, Fox Park, Nina. Yeah. Um they, they have that really cool special. I see I know so that cool. park, not just because yeah. I brought my kids there. Like yeah. you just exactly and you the know new what baseball these diamonds at Washington Park are yeah. super cool oh, too. Yeah. It's all rubber top, so there's no like you don't get the mirror pool. Yeah, but it would be cool <laughs> if like we yeah, could you get dirty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I think it, there's so much room, right? There's so much space, and like there's so much like ideas we have, and like if yeah. we just put all that in we there, have space, yeah. creating a destination. That's exactly awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah something that was in the budget. That was in budget. Something on that. Yeah. The for years at swimming host beach, yep, whatever. Yep, the, what's the, happened to that? Well, so when Pollock controlled by it, when Pollock, well, so we rented, we rented as an indoor rental. So we were trying to maybe get um shoulder where we're with heat on. Actually, I still have to go over there, but we have the heat on. They're tr testing out the heat because we have um, a group that wants to maybe set up uh, cycling bikes in there um, and do a little program out of there in the shoulder seasons um as as a other that's what it's used for now rentals and we did um our snowshoe hike out of there uh, i'm talking about uh where they but in terms of actually swim. yeah but in terms of actually swimming um that hasn't been since pollock opened oh, no. it's because what we ended up finding out from all the history i read was that the tenants went way down once that opened and so they just closed it because it wasn't worth it from a lifeguard well, just time perspective just to throw in the mix if you're going to make a massive playground you might as well have a beach for the kids too. It's there. It is a nice part. That's our next. But yeah, yeah. I know there's been talks yeah, in the past about we'll talk about that on top. replacing yeah. the pavilion. Um, because yeah, it is a nice setting there. Well, um, I just with the clientele, I don't think a beach is a good sell. They want water parks. Amro came in, and then Pollock Pool came in, and just. You know, that's yeah. what people want. Yeah, I think it's a nice view. So like if that ever became like a nice shelter again, you know, obviously it's a nice setting. You know, honestly, the park's a nice setting if you can fix all that up. And because right now you go in there and it's echoey. I mean, we would need to either, we either need to remodel it or gut it or replace it eventually or remove it. There's a, there, as you can see, there's a lot of pieces to the community park because it's a big park, and that's why we need to do a master plan for it. Oh, and it's just so hard to get money because we're the first things that they ask. It's recreation, it's not necessary. You know, they can go to the city of Oshkosh, they can go somewhere else and use it. But we have a nice area here, and we should invest in the community, but it, it's hard to get the funds to stay. I mean, the splash pad was a great idea. That got axed. We we're going to build an, uh, a new pavilion by the splash pad. That got axed. The playground equipment's been in the budget like seven years. Never happens. You know, it it's just you're the first one out of the out of the mix because they don't have to have it. You know, so it's like, well, we're going to get rid of something. We have the playground equipment can last a couple more years. You know, and eventually some kid will fall and break his leg, and then we'll either take it out and have nothing, or we'll find the money to replace it. But it's for the seven years I've been on here, I and every other board member would like to see it happen, and it usually doesn't happen. You know, it just gets pushed back to next year, and then the board changes. Like next year, I'll be off, so my seven years or eight years of experience will be gone, and we'll have a board with four new members that will try to get the, the playground equipment again. But you lose the past history, you know, like how many, it's like Jerry Finch dog park, that probably took 15 years. And nothing happens fast in the parks department. The equipment they have, the, if you looked at their shop, their shop is, you know, the oversized garage where they, they can't even wash their equipment in there. They have to wash it out in the parking lot. And they had put in for a new building probably 10 years ago. Well, that never happens, you know, what you got's good enough. <laughs> you know, that, that's just the way this, Parks Department operates. City of Oshkosh getting a brand new Parks Department. You know, I, I think it's $11 million, you know, but they value their parks. And you can tell, I mean, you go to Menominee Park, it's just so nice. You can go to that little Oshkosh, then you can take your kids over to the zoo. Then if you want, you can go for a swim. You can spend the whole Saturday there and not spend the, the zoo is free, the playland's free, and the beach is free. So you pack a little cooler and it, all day it don't cost you a dime. I mean, that's something like what we need to do. And, and I, I mean, 
and the one thing I, I mean, I know we're, we're gonna, I don't want to go too crazy, but the one, you know, over the two, I've been here two years since in May. I mean, I think we're at least making progress. Um, Grumman Bowl Landing, what got approval in two or three years. Um, Wacaw Dam, I mean, granted the construction's not approved yet, um, but the engineering was approved. So, and, and, you know, it's a good, I mean, a good step. We're looking at Shangri-La here. Um, the expo is gonna be a big one, uh, the parking lots um, at the, the soccer area. Um, and then, uh, the expo will be a big, you know, depending on what the board does, but it's still in there. And that's a four, I mean, four million as of right now, we're working on it. Um, so if we keep going in this direction, I think we're going the right direction. I mentioned when I first got here, we have catching up to do, to your point, the playground. I mean, we have catching up to do in a lot of areas. Um, so I think we're in the right direction. But as soon as we lose that momentum, then we're just, because we're, we're catching up uh, to kind of your point, because there hasn't been a lot given to the parks department but it's showing um and but we're doing a lot of catching up um so hopefully we can keep that momentum this is my goal you know and the expo side when all three phases are done that could be enterprise fund they should be self-supporting you know like right now the, they're on the tax levy but when that actually get gets done over there they should be able to be self-supporting and then the parks department would just have to fund county park you know, because you'd have enough events and stuff like that that you should be able to carry money over. Like last year, it was two hundred forty thousand. We turned back. Mm -hmm. If we had an enterprise fund, that would have stayed in the expo center for future. You know, but yeah, I think the expo it, itself is about fifty thousand in the positive. Yeah, until you actually get the five million dollars worth of work done over there, it, you need the county tax levy to, to complete that. But once all three phases are completed, I think that it would possibly be an enterprise fund. One other thing, maybe for future agenda, I don't know if it's ready for next month or not. Um, is there what's what's the status of reinstalling that sun, that arch that study view that's been? That would be with phase two. Okay, so, so we're not there yet. Yep, yeah. and really, I think Rift checked four million. It's what part of that four million? Four million. Okay. Yeah, I think we have. You had checked a while ago. I don't know if you remember. I think the Oshkosh, um, um Foundation. Foundation. Thank you. I think they had a thousand dollars in their account for donations or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So, so yeah, it's 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 in the plan. Okay. For phase two. All right. I guess just one more question about pickleball. Since the tent, the 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 net is like a foot higher. Oh, I mean the tent for the tennis, it's higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so right. that is not a foot. It's just that much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if if one court were designated for pickleball and the and the net was lowered at whatever it looks like six inches or so. There's no reason why people couldn't play tennis there if it weren't being used. The lines might be a little bit wrong and it might be a little easier to get your ball over the net because it's this much lower, but that seems to make more sense to make sure that it's available for everybody rather than, than have the pickleball people have to worry about the additional six inches. Is there a reason why you couldn't play pickle? Well, why you couldn't play tennis on a? On you're a just flipping the script, you know. Yeah. Um, really, all they need to do is there's a hook on the bottom of the net. They just clip well, it. That's on just for the center. You said pulls it down. And otherwise, yeah, but it is. I mean, otherwise, yeah, it's. I mean, you're otherwise you're gonna get tennis players aren't gonna want to come out here because well, so first of all, if you only have one pickleball court, people all might not want to drive out here to maybe get to play pickleball because there's only one court. Okay. Now you get out here and it's being used and you have no other options. They, people still say about play pickleball. It's just not as, you know, we don't have the leagues that they used to. And you're messing with the net too. So, you know, people aren't Every just going to casually come down. They're going to go straight to the middle and then you get a nice little dip in there. You definitely don't want that. So, Stretching it out. Yeah. No. All right. I've done my duty for pickleball, for the, for the request <laughs> for pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> what was I can say about that? Okay. Anything else? I'm ready to. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay, Josh. Second. Bender. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right.